Yo, what's up guys? It's Jason back here again. I wanted to talk to you guys about the number one skill that you need to master in order to become a programmer. It's not Python, it's not JavaScript, it's not data structures and algorithms, it's not being able to read binary bits, zeros and ones and all that, none of that. Matter of fact, it's not even being tech savvy. It's not communication skills and it's definitely not math. The number one skill that you need to develop is dun, da, 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 the ability to keep your ass in your seat. I call it ass in your seatology. That's it. I'm sorry if you were expecting quantum mechanics or some crazy algorithm and all that BS. Most likely if you're watching this, you want to learn how to code or you're trying to learn something from the internet. You're not going to get anywhere if you can't sit still. Look, you're not going to learn the code or learn anything if you constantly get up to go clean your room, clean the kitchen, go cook dinner, go cook lunch for like the 50th time, go walk the dog, go grab bubble tea with a friend because you can't sit still and you need a rest after sitting for like half an hour. Don't get me wrong, I, I don't expect anyone to like stay seated for a whole day or like more than like two or three hours, right, without taking a break. But let's be real here. How bad do you really want it? If you're saying to me that you wanna learn how to code to change your life, get a new job, um, but then you're, I see you on Instagram and uh, you're going out like every four to five nights out of the week, uh, playing video games all day and night, and then just constantly you know, diving into that TikTok rabbit hole. Nah, that's not gonna cut it. Now, I'm not gonna leave you hanging without giving you some solutions. First, we need to identify the problem. And the issue is that you need more ass in your seat time. So a solution is to schedule your coding time. I would start off by scheduling your week and make sure you schedule in your coding time along with you know, your everyday you know, needs, obligations, and responsibilities. Plain and simple, it's kind of like working out, right? Like if you just go to the gym every day and you don't really have a plan that you wrote down or you don't have kind of like a routine that you stick with and you plan ahead of time, you know, uh, the first time you go into the gym, the second time might be fine, but every time you go back, you're kind of like, you're just wasting time, a lot of mental energy trying to figure out what to do, right? As opposed to like, okay, boom, Monday, I'm working on, you know, shoulders and chest, Tuesday, I'm working on, you know, back and biceps. Wednesday, legs, boom, rinse and repeat. All right, so when scheduling your week, a couple of things to consider. You wanna maximize ass in your seat time for coding, minimize common life BS stuff, and balance yourself mentally. For example, if I work a nine to five, I would schedule at least half an hour to an hour of coding time in the morning, right? Um, and it does, you don't even have to necessarily um, get anything accomplished, right? Just schedule coding time, right? And what it, what it can be is it'll just set you up for the evening coding time, right? So back to it, half an hour to an hour in the morning of coding time, and you work, whatever, nine to five, eight to four, whatever it is, after that, I suggest you hit the gym, right? Nothing too crazy. You're not a bodybuilder now, boo-boo, okay? What we're trying to do is we're just trying to keep our energy up for the remainder of the evening, okay? So then after that, um, do a short dinner. If you have a family, whatever, you know, schedule your family time. I know this sounds abnormal, right? Uh, but whatever, this is what you got to do, okay? Schedule your um, relationship times or whatever, and then boom, two hours of coding time, okay? Now remember, we had that half an hour to one hour in the morning coding time, right? Again, I told you, you don't have to actually get anything done. What you can actually do is just set yourself up for the evening time, okay? So I wake up in the morning, 
I was like, you know what? I don't really know what to do, but I'm going to at least come up with a to-do list of what I'm going to tackle um, that evening. Okay. I might even open up a code editor. I might even start reading some stuff. Like if I'm doing an assignment, I might start going over it, you know, and then I'll just kind of like think about it throughout the day. Right. So then by the time the evening time come uh, and I'm ready, I'm about to get the ass in the seat time. Right. I'm ready. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, and another thing, notice how I said um, a short dinner. Okay. Man, I see people make this mistake all the time. I don't know what it is with people, but they love to cook every single night. Man, you know how much, you know how tired you get after cooking? Nah, boo boo. You, no, we, this is crunch time. Okay. We're not trying to get gourmet up for dinner every night. Nah, save that for like Friday or Saturday night or something. Okay. What I would do is I would actually schedule, okay, the afternoons on Sunday to actually just cook my meals. All right. Cook my dinner, lunch, or whatever for the rest of the week. Okay. So I don't have to actually expend energy. All right. Throughout the week to just, just to feed myself. Guys, it's really about energy management as much as it is about time management. Okay. To be honest with you, time management is actually for amateurs. Okay. The pros, they focus on energy management, but we're going to save that for another video. So remember what I said about balancing yourself mentally. Okay. I know myself and I know that I cannot stay in on a Friday night and a Saturday night. I just can't. Okay. Now, if you got something to do like Friday night or Sunday night and you ain't even done it and you, you got to do, man, do what you got to do, boo boo. Okay. But, you know, assuming, assuming that you put in the work that you scheduled already, right? You put in that ass in your seat time. Okay. Every single day, that little half hour to an hour in the morning, that two hour or three, two to three hours at night, every single day, you put in that work in, right? Uh, and you also schedule that, that, that work in on Saturday morning and Sundays, right? Assuming that, okay, give yourself a break. Take it easy on a Friday, um, Friday night and Saturday night. Go out, right? Hang out with your buddies. Grab dinner with your lady, boyfriend or whatever. Um, but again, don't, don't go like ape shit and, you know, get all, get wasted and stuff. Okay. Because the last thing you want to do is spend all weekend. Okay. And if you're always me, like spend like the next two weeks trying to recover from like, you know, alcohol. Matter of fact, just don't even drink. Okay. Don't even drink. You go out. Okay. It's not worth it. All right. So, you know, after you go out on a Friday night, like when you wake up that Saturday morning, or whatever, right? You're, you're going to be good, right? Because you already scheduled your code in time. You scheduled all this stuff. You know exactly what to do. All right. So balance yourself mentally. If you don't schedule your life, someone else will. All right. So another tip that I want to leave you guys with to help you out with your ass in your seat time okay, is what I call, well, actually, I didn't call this, but uh, the Pomodoro technique, okay, and the Pomodoro technique is actually a productivity technique, okay, where it's kind of like bursts of total focus time followed by a small break, okay, and you kind of just rinse and repeat, okay, it's kind of like um, interval training, okay, in interval training, right, we're trying to maximize uh, kind of like our uh, calories burnt and all that stuff, right? So um, you would sprint at full force for like one to two minutes or whatever, okay? And then followed by walking and just kind of like chilling, okay? And then kind of like rinse and repeat, okay? Same thing with the Pomodoro technique, but instead of uh, sprinting, okay? You, it's kind of like a mind sprint, okay? You're, you, you set a timer, Okay, for 25 minutes, uh, 20, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, however you want to do it, but in that range, and you basically just dedicate that entire time to, to one singular task. Okay, no checking phone, 
no getting up for the bathroom, none of that. Like no checking YouTube, Instagram, none of that, okay? You are totally focused on a single task for uh, this one in interval of time, okay? And then once the timer goes off, um, set a timer for five to seven minutes, okay? And then that time is your break time, okay? Do whatever you need. Check your phone, um, go to the bathroom, you know, do what you gotta do, okay? And then rinse and repeat, okay? So when you do one unit of work, right, which is that 25 minute chunk, and then followed by that, that, break, that break chunk, right, which is five to seven minutes, that is, that is considered one Pomodoro. You just keep doing this. And, and what I would suggest is that you keep track of it. Okay, keep track of it. So basically two, two Pomodoros would roughly equal to about an hour of uh, work. Okay, so uh, what, you know, remember what, what I was saying earlier, you know, in a day, right, schedule half an hour to an hour in the morning followed by two to three hours at night, right, which roughly translates to about what is that? So that's three to four, say four hours, four hours. So that's about eight Pomodoros, okay? If you can do eight Pomodoros a day and dedicate that to just solely, you know, to solely coding time, ass in your seat time, okay? I would say you're good, okay? You are good. You are on a good trajectory, okay? At least you can tell yourself that, hey, I put in the work, I did, at least I did the simplest thing that was required. So earlier when I was experimenting with this technique, I actually bought a physical timer. Like I bought one of those tomato kitchen timer, okay? But uh, you don't have to, okay? You can use your uh, iWatch, you can use your phone, whatever. But um, I use this website called um, tomatotimer.com, okay? And I don't know, I, I just use that, all right? because. I don't like to use my phone uh, or any digital stuff to keep track of the timer because it, it just kind of like, it tempts me into, you know, checking my phone, right? But the, 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 the point of actually using the technique is to actually stay focused, right? And not be distracted by stuff, okay? So do whatever you want, but check out this website if you need to. Okay, guys, so the moral of the story is, you know, stop talking about it. Stop complaining and be about it, okay? I see all these people um, that complains that, you know, coding is not for them, uh, they're not good at math. Uh, all these reasons, all these excuses, okay? And, but at the end of the day, they got zero ass in your seat time, okay? Zero, that's like, that's like again, back to the working out thing. Someone, you know, I'm pretty sure you probably ran, ran into this person multiple times. They're always complaining about being overweight. They're always complaining about being out of shape. They always complain about, you know, I wish I had more energy and all this stuff. But guess what? You check, you check their receipts, they got zero gym time, okay? Basically, they never even showed up to the gym. H how would you even know if you're good or bad at something if you actually never even done, like, the simplest thing that was required for you to get that shit done? Okay, and in this case, you know, learn how to code, the simplest thing that you need to do, all right, is to keep your butt in that seat. That's it for today. Um, again, the moral story is, you know, are you doing even just the easy things? Are you even doing like the simple, easy stuff? Okay, don't complain about all these hard stuff uh, stop looking like a hundred yards ahead, right? Take care of basically what is a yard or five yards ahead in front of you, okay? Like worry about that stuff first. Take care of that, the, the easy stuff, the low hanging fruits first, okay? Like once you conquer that, okay? Then just conquer the next thing, the next thing after that, all right? And I just wanna let you guys know that I am working on a super simple um, calculator tutorial that's made totally in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, okay? Um, it's taking me a while because the thing is that um, it's gonna be a pretty comprehensive video that where I will basically go in depth um, on the basics, the super basics of um, programming, of 
you know, web development. Okay. I know there's a ton of uh, calculate tutorial videos out there already, but like, I feel like all of them kind of like come at it with like, oh, you should kind of like already know this. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, like this video, I plan on making it for like the absolute noobs. So subscribe, hit that notification bell, you know, when you want to be notified of when that video is available and keep your ass in your seat.